Please be seated. I've never really shied away from telling you the secrets of, of, of the trade, uh, those things that uh, we as preachers don't often tell. I've done this long enough that it doesn't matter to me anymore. Uh, I've told you about various things that we do or don't do, like or don't like, and I think I've conveyed to you that we often have favorite Bible scriptures that we like to use. We like to use them in part because they may support our theology as we see it, and we all have a little different theology. Uh, we may do that because it's a, a familiar text. Maybe we learned it as a child or, or whatever. It has some special significance. The other side of that is that there are those texts in the Scriptures that uh, we, we don't like. And some of us don't like some of them, but a lot of us, there's, there's some of them that a lot of us don't like. We don't like the one today. This gospel is not a scripture that I come joyfully to talk with you about. It's just kind of how it is. And that may seem a, a bit strange because as you begin to read this scripture, it's a, uh, why would anyone not want to talk about it? Jesus and the guys have been out and about and as they're in a foreign country for them, a Gentile territory, a Gentile woman comes up to Jesus, and she comes running after him and says, my daughter has a demon, and I want you to get rid of it. I have to tell you, it doesn't happen every day, but occasionally this does happen to clergy. If someone runs after us and asks us to cast out a demon. But anyway, this happened with Jesus that day. And what does Jesus do? He ignores her. Now, that to me is, is a tiny bit offensive. Why would Jesus just simply ignore this woman? But I can kind of live with that. And then we get to the next part of the story. And the disciples tell him, they've been chasing after us. She's been chasing after us to get rid of her. And so she comes back to Jesus again. And she says, will you heal my daughter? And Jesus said, because this was his theology. This is how he read it, how he saw it. I came only for the, for the Jews. And you're a Gentile. I came. I'm not here to serve you. Go away. No, no offense. Just go away. Now, I find that a little more offensive. But she's not to be deterred. She, she has a deep need. And she comes back to Jesus. And this time Jesus says, Why would I give the food that belongs to children to a dog? You see why I don't want to talk about this scripture? How offensive is this? It doesn't fit with my concept of Jesus loves the little children, all the children of the world. It doesn't fit with my theology, yet there's something there. And you know what? She didn't let it stop her. And she came back to Jesus. And she said, I may be a dog, but my daughter needs you. And Jesus looked at her and said, it's done. Your child is healed. What a story. What a story. And as I read it this week, and and thought, what in the world am I going to do with this thing again? I became aware. I became
became aware that, that there were a couple of elements that were very, very important in this story for me this week. One was her persistence. She worried the bejeebies out of Jesus. She wouldn't let it go. And the reason she wouldn't let it go is because of the deep need of her soul. This wasn't something that she was simply asking for herself, something that she would like to have happen. Oh, by the way, Jesus, if you have enough time, this was her daughter who obviously meant everything to her. And she wasn't going to let that go. But the other part that I think that is important in this is this. Jesus got beyond hearing her words and he heard her deepest need. He got beyond what she was saying to hear what she could not say. That, for us, my friends, is the core of pastoral relationships. It's what it means for us to be pastoral with each other. And I've come to wonder in the last few days what would happen if we could make one small but very difficult change in our lives. If we as a people be as, as followers of Christ or as a community or as a nation or as a world could simply get beyond the place where we think so much of what we have to say that we take enough time to listen to each other. I mean, the images are stark and they're real and they're ever-present of two sides standing against each other and each proclaiming in each verse a louder voice because somehow we have to get across to the other that we are right. The essence of what happened with Jesus and this Canaanite woman is that he heard that deeper need. And what if you and I can model that here but also for others in the world? What if you and I are not satisfied with what people say to us, but are willing to look beyond it and open our ears to their hearts? And that maybe, just maybe, the words that they say that may offend us may lead us to a deeper understanding and a relationship with them. You, 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 ha you have ideas of how this happens. You know what it is like when your significant other, whoever that is, tells you something and you know exactly what they're saying. You hear it exactly as they say it. And then you find out you're wrong. Ever happened to you? It never, ever happens to me. I've only heard others talk about it. But sometimes when we are engaged in conversations with each other, when we are living and sharing out our faith in some way, we do so and we listen with our own experiences. And we hear others through our own ears without setting them apart. It's tainted by our own theology or our own psychology or our own sociology or our own simple understanding of having lived with this person all these years. Maybe, just maybe, if we open our hearts to listen to others, we might move beyond that to hear 
that when that person says to us who we don't know and who we may never ever see again and when they say to us I hate you that we may actually hear that in their heart they are lonely or when they say something else to us that in their heart they may be saying there is no one else for me or they may be saying that in their heart I have been hurt so deeply I am afraid. We listen with our hearts to move closer to others and to God. That's part of what prayer is about. We, we have a whole book. It's in front of you there in some, some of the seats. A book of common prayers. A lot of words. Wonderful words. Beautiful words. They express things about us. But oftentimes we get caught up in the idea that our prayers are words. It's what we say to God. It's what we ask from God. It's our time with God to convince God that God should see it our way because we're right. When in reality... Listening with our hearts to God may actually be the center of our prayer. It may be actually what draws us closer to God. For the Celtic Christians, they referred to this as listening to the heartbeat of God. So cherish those moments, those, those times when we don't know and we may sit silently just waiting. And not just listening with our ears, but opening ourselves to the presence of God in our lives. Look what happened to the Canaanite woman. She did that. It wasn't just her persistence. At every level, she opened herself a little more to the presence of Christ in her life. And what happened? She was transformed and her daughter was healed. Listening, listening is vital. But hearing, is so important to us in our lives. Our lives with each other and our lives in God. So there you have it. Maybe I fabricated or twisted things a bit in from this scripture. Maybe I've I've tried to reframe it into my own theology. I admit that it's a difficult, difficult passage. But sometimes if I can get out of my own thinking enough to open myself to the living word, then I can see how it transforms myself and others around me. Thanks be to God. Amen.